Hi, and welcome to SF Live. I'm your host, Christina Marie Flores. My guest tonight is an anti-war activist whose son, Casey, was killed at 24 years old during his service at the Iraq War on April 4, 2004. She has attracted international attention in 2005 for her extended demonstration at a camp outside of George W. Bush's Texas ranch, garnering her both support and criticism. It is my pleasure to welcome tonight's guest, Cindy Sheehan. Welcome, Cindy. Great, thank you. It's nice to be here again. Very good. Yeah, well, thank and you I for get going. support and criticism for everything I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> not just camping. Out that means you're George living Bush's. right. <laughs> yeah. Now, when Casey came to you and told you that he was going to join the military, what mm -hmm. were your feelings at that point? Well, he and his he and his dad. I mean, his dad and I were just really shocked. He was already 21. He had already been in college for three years. Mm -hmm. He had resisted military recruitment since he was about 16. In Vacaville, there's a, an Air Force base right next door to Vacaville, Travis Air Force Base mm -hmm. in Fairfield. And so he had been um, recruited pretty heavily and had always resisted it. Mm -hmm. And then he came home one day and, and we knew he was like talking to a recruiter. But he came home one day and he had um, joined and so at that point we thought the only thing we could do would be to be supportive. Right, because once you resist them they want to join even more. Yeah, <laughs> so, and he was already 21 and you know if that was something he really wanted to do then we were the kind of family that's, that supports each other. Mm -hmm. Well, when you spoke with him and he uh, initially said that he was interested in this and this is something he wanted to do, as he was in the military, did that change at all? Did you receive any kind of communications with him that maybe he was thinking twice about it or was it still gung-ho all the way through? He was, he was never gung-ho. He joined to get college credits, mm. I mean college money. He joined to get college credit too. They told him he could take classes in the army that they never let him take. He joined to be a chaplain's assistant because he was a real faithful Catholic. But, you know, the army just basically um, broke every promise to him. He, of course, joined before George Bush was president, before mm -hmm. the Iraq War. And, um, you know, everything changed mm -hmm. on September 11th. And he was um, basically trapped in the military. He was supposed to get out in August of '04. That was his four-year enlistment. Um, he was told that he was going to be stop-lost, and that's, they don't tell many people this, but I think people know now, you join for four years, and then you're on individual ready reserve for another four years. So they basically get that. eight years out of your life. Mm -hmm. And so he re-enlisted to get a bonus and to um, change his job. He, he ended up being a Humvee mechanic, mm -hmm. which he hated, mm -hmm. you know, and I um, got an email from one of his friends um, last year, and he said, you know, your son was a great guy, but he was a lousy mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> he, he really sucked. And then I knew that guy was telling the truth, because everybody else told us, oh, your son was such a great mechanic. And I would just say, really? <laughs> you know, he didn't even know how to change the oil in his car. That doesn't sound right. And he hated it. I mean, he called me at least once a day from from Fort Hood and he didn't like being a mechanic so so anyway um, yeah there's a lot of things that the military doesn't they don't tell you when you when you enlist yeah that, I was surprised to hear that I did see a documentary on that and offering many things that really are outrageous you know because that's not truth that's right not Casey um, was off was and they actually signed a contract the recruiter puts these things in the contract and then there's little tiny print that says, you know, in time of war or in time if your country needs you or whatever, these are all void. Mm -hmm. And they don't, but they don't say that to mm -hmm. the kids. They offer them $20,000, you know, to a 21-year-old college student, that's a heck of a lot of money. And then when they um, finish boot camp, they get a fraction of that. Mm -hmm. And he, Casey only got like $4,100 when he finished boot camp. And and he was really disappointed with, you know, the lies. He got to boot camp and said, you know, Mom, I can't be a chaplain's assistant. I have to be a cook or a Humvee mechanic. Mm. And so he chose to be a Humvee mechanic. I guess his cooking was even worse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and that's just... 
that's just something that he didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, he he wanted to follow his heart and be a chaplain's assistant, and um, he because he wanted to be a deacon in the Catholic Church, and he thought that that would be really good training. And he was a very faithful um, Catholic and and just a really good kid. Mm -hmm. And so he gets trapped in this thing he didn't want to do going somewhere he didn't want to go and he was killed five days after he got to Iraq. Five days? Yeah. I, I can't even imagine that. Yeah, um, it's and hard. <clears throat> to be able to take that sorrow and that loss and at what point did you turn that into activism? I mean what was the, the information that you found or uncovered in your search for why this happened to your son mm -hmm. that made you say wait a minute and move forward with that and get that momentum that you have going still today. Well, you know, we, nobody in my family supported George Bush. Nobody supported the war. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we didn't even support Afghanistan. We were horrified um, when Casey was forced to switch units to go to Afghanistan and that didn't end up happening. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, so I knew before he left that if he died, it would be for nothing. And I didn't want him to go, and he didn't want to go. And But he goes, Mom, I have to go. I'll, I'll go, I'll get it over with, I'll come back home. Mm -hmm. And he was, like, gone two weeks, and he came back home dead. So, um, but everything that I, everything that happened since Casey died has, has just been so, so outrageous, and it's so hurtful, and, and it, it makes me so angry. And the other thing that makes me angry is that, most of the people in the country aren't outraged or angry over it. Why? Why you know, are, do they not understand? I mean, the, I was just speaking with Cindy earlier about a video that was up on the Facebook, love Facebook, mm -hmm. and it showed just horrific images of civilian casualty and the amount of civilians that are not involved in this. They are, do not want to you know, be involved in the death. And, and if we saw those pictures, if we on the, the mainstream media got to see what we are causing here, or at least supporting, do you think that would change anything? I mean, well, I think that that's a, a major part of it. I think one of the reasons that my protest was so successful in the summer of '05 is that it it was really out of the box. It was um, something that people hadn't seen. They hadn't seen a mother whose son was killed in Iraq disagreeing with the president and with the policies, and so it was something very unusual. And I want I wanted the people in this country to know my grief. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to know Casey and um, that Casey wasn't just a number, you know, that Casey wasn't just a pawn, you know, in George Bush's Im imperial chess game that, that they could use for profit and for, and for lies. And, you know, they don't allow the coffins to be photographed coming home. Um, there's no draft. There's no shared sacrifice. They make sure our taxes are, are not raised. You know, the whole credit um, scandal we have now, when after 9-11, instead of George Bush saying, let's tighten our belts, let's let's look and oh, see yeah. why these people um, hate us. He said, go shopping, go shopping and everything will be better. Go shopping. That was incredible. You know, was, and, yeah. and so this, this, particularly Iraq and Afghanistan, have been kept as far away from the average American as possible. And if they don't care about our soldiers, I, I'm sure they would if they knew or yeah. if they thought about it. They they even um, care less about the innocent civilians that are being killed. Over a million in Iraq so far have been killed, uh, three to four million displaced. And everybody in a country of only 25 million when this started, everybody there has lost a, a loved one a dear loved one mm -hmm. you know most people in the united states don't even personally know somebody who has had a child killed in iraq or a father or a mother or or a brother or a sister